So the Town Deal Initiative is a, a government funded programme set up in 2019 as part of the levelling up agenda. Boston was one of 100 towns throughout the country that was provided the opportunity to bid for up to £25 million worth of funding for a series of projects that would make transformational changes to the area in which they lived. The Town Deal has formed a fantastic partnership with joint working to enable the delivery of a series of projects that are starting to make a real difference to the people of Boston. The Towns Fund means that we're already seeing some small-scale investments, whether it's Blenkin Hall, whether it's the library in the stump, really significant assets to Boston. But the big stuff is still to come. So things like the Mayflower Centre, investing in the skills of local people with the long-term aim of getting them to work locally, to grow the local economy, really serious, sustainable, long-term investment in Boston on top of those projects that really help local communities and, of course, tourism as well. I'm really excited as well that Boston is held as an exemplar town deal board and that's credit to those board members who've given so much of their time already and it's credit too to our local officers who've worked so hard with civil servant colleagues and with ministers to hold Boston up in a very good light and that in itself has already attracted additional funding from government because they know that Boston is a town that can and will deliver. They know that their grant funding is safe with us, that we will do what it says on the tin. The Mayflower is a £10 million flagship project for the Boston Towns deal, offering the opportunity for learners from all over our region to come and learn in a space that inspires with its biophilic design, a place where people can meet to think about business, to think about learning and to come together. The courses on offer will be everything from community employability, we'll have business incubation units and there will be opportunities to study on degree programmes. We're now at a point where we have planning permission for the building, we are ready to clear the site in readiness for the construction to start and we're just now tweaking the final design. It will be a building unlike any other that Boston has ever known. The Boston Leisure Project is a really exciting uh, capital investment. 2.45 million of town deal funding. Uh, really pleased to secure that uh, alongside 4.5 million of council funding effectively to uh, provide a, a, a significant extension to the, to the facility. Brand new village changing rooms. Uh, new fitness suite and effectively we'll be re-roofing the main leisure pool as well. It's the single most important project leisure-wise for the council since around 1989. We're investing in what we've got now, it's going to look nice, it's going to have a new gym, it's going to have the pools, it's going to have so many other facilities and with the Mayflower project as well, hopefully the whole area is going to be improved in that view. Effectively it will link the space between the Leisure Centre and the College Mayflower project so that everyone effectively can benefit from the two facilities. People able to learn uh, leisure skills through the college but equally people who visit the Leisure Centre being able to benefit from the facilities and the cross opportunities that, uh, that the college brings and the plaza is a key part of that, of that project. The Centre for Food and Fresh Produce Logistics is a programme that's funded by the Towns Fund and that provides support for businesses within the Boston area within the food value chain uh, in three areas. That's training that's funded and provided by Boston College, consultancy and business advice from the University of Lincoln and then grant funding that's 50% up to a maximum of £10,000 for purchase of, of equipment. We've purchased now our coffee machine, which we no longer rent from Stokes. So we're now able to, that reduces obviously our um, overheads and increases our bottom line, which has been really, really helpful for us. But also there's been the support that the programme have been able to provide for us in terms of um, professionalisation, for instance, of our chilli jam labels, where we've had the scientific testing carried out in terms of the calorific information, etc., and the product life, which is something we absolutely wouldn't have been able to do on our own, but also the support that um, a number of um, colleagues on the programme have been able to provide to us in terms of advice um, and, uh, you know, advice also where we can find 
help with accountancy, for instance. Both Lee and I have recently been on an accountancy uh, software course so that we were able to operate our own books, for instance. Businesses often ask, should they reach out and what are the risks? And what I say to them is the team exists just to help businesses. So we're here primarily to help. There's no downside to reaching out. If we can help, we will. That's why we're here. And if we can't help, we'll always say, so we don't waste your time and resources. Boston Railway Station has been given £2.8 million funding. And this is for the redevelopment at that station. The funding is from the Government Town Deal Fund, which is part of Boston Town Deal, Rail Heritage Trust, Network Rail and East Midlands Railway, which 2.5 million of that has come from the Town Deal Fund investment. With this, we are able to make some fantastic improvements. This is internally and externally at Boston Station. This will include improving the wayfinding, upgrading the heating, the IT, CCTV and the security systems. It will make a significant difference to Boston Railway Station. We have some fantastic new facilities at the station after the redevelopment has been done. With that will be two start-up new offices, a community cafe which will also run alongside a bookable community room. So having these new facilities there will be a great opportunity not just for our customers but for our community as well. The redevelopment will start November this year, so it's very exciting, only around the corner. It will finish next year, in the end of 2024, and once this is done, this is going to be a fantastic opportunity for everybody to see what work that we have done at Boston Station. It's gonna be a really big transformation, and I can't wait to show you. Healing the High Street is looking to develop some of the historic buildings in Boston, of which there are many fabulous examples, some of which you can see on Dolphin Lane behind us. Um, the funding is available to support development of shop fronts, um, conservation and repairs to some of the historic buildings, and to help retailers develop their property with support of funding from the town deal. Um, and there's approximately three million pounds has been made available for those repairs and maintenance schemes. So the work that we're doing here at Dolphin Lane um, is really exciting. You can probably see behind me that the space is really well used, continues to be incredibly well used, but this work means that the new level access makes it easier for pedestrians, for people with mobility challenges, uh, for parents with buggies and push chairs, so that they can more easily access the retail opportunities on Dolphin Lane. We've worked with a number of the shops down here, including Crumbs Cafe, to improve their shop fronts and the look of Dolphin Lane and also some of the shops on Marketplace, so numbers 16 and 17, and Hopper's Jewelers. So when you look around the Marketplace and down Dolphin Lane, it encourages people to look up, to put down their phones for a few moments, and just experience some of that heritage that we value so much in Boston, and hopefully it will touch a few more people at the same time. Shodfriars is an interesting um, landmark building. People will know it perhaps not as Shodfriars, but as the timber-fronted building on the marketplace. We're working with the owner to conserve and repair the timber frontage um, and to bring that building back into popular use so that people can experience that um, space more easily. There is still funding available, so my team are working really hard, um, meeting with retailers in Boston, finding out if there are any other opportunities for us to do development work. So if there are a local business who would like to get in touch, who think they might benefit from some of that funding, we're happy to talk to them and we urge that they get in touch with our team at Heritage Lincolnshire. Where we are now in the library, um, the books, which is a, a very unique collection of books, founded in 1634, but they were suffering from not just general age, but because there was no moisture control in here, no temperature control, the books were slowly decaying. And that's one of the reasons we, it wasn't accessible to the public, because we tried to preserve them as best we could. Now with the project, we've now got humidity controls in there, temperature controls and light controls, so we can actually open the, this collection now up to the general public. The oldest book is a copy of St. Augustine's work on Genesis, and that was copied by the monks in 1170. Although this is a library project, it's also a library and lighting project, so the lighting will start hopefully in the autumn, and so by sort of early part of next year the lighting will finish. But the library is 90% complete now. One of the most exciting things about what we've done and achieved through the 
the Town Deal Fund has been the fact that these books are now going to be preserved for future generations. And it's not only myself and a very small select people that can enjoy them, but the entire town can enjoy them. And I, I'm pretty sure that going forward, when we have our tours of St. Bottles and all that, the library will be the highlight of anybody's tour here. What I'm most excited about the whole project is being able to go down to the door that we've all walked through where the notice says private and actually being able to remove that and just put up the word library so that it's open for the, all the public. The building that we stand in now was uh, becoming uh, a bit of a drain on the parish resources really. It was a uh, parish hall that needed considerable amount of restoration work and we were very keen that whatever we did with this building it was for the benefit of the community and something that would create a self-sustainable project and building so by having the multi-use space that we have now it means that we can um, serve various different needs of our community as well as creating that more sustainable future. But we're also working with our local college to offer various different courses in here too. We also have the Song School, which has developed obviously our own choral tradition here. We have in the old Blenkin Hall a new upper floor, which is now dedicated as a song school for the parish and for Boston Town. So that consists basically of a rehearsal room, which we're sitting in now, a robing space where our choir keep their robes, and then also the space to house our, our parish music library, which is quite an extensive collection of music. It's made really a huge difference having this space because for the past 700 years, the choirs had no rehearsal space. The, the only room they had to work in uh, was the church itself. And whilst you might suggest that that's a, a fantastic space to rehearse and to, to perform in, actually having our own dedicated purpose-built space, it means that uh, we've got a facility now where we can have our rehearsals in here uninterrupted, and that makes such a difference. I think the sympathetic nature of the restoration has made this building flourish. It has restored the asset to the town whilst also enabling us to have this multi-use space for our community. Leveling up funding is about investing in places so that they feel loved and that's part of what the PE21 project is about but it's also about doing stuff for the longer term. It's about changing areas that need some love so that people see the pride that we all have in Boston in a real physical form but also in a way that is sustainable for the future. That means places that people want to go out, places that people want to spend time but also that fulfil really useful public services functions, whether that is around the health service or whether that's around the nighttime economy, all of that that make people realise that Boston is getting big investment from central government but also is going to be able to stand on its own two feet in a way that is sustainable for the long term. So within our levelling up fund bid we applied for what was called the Rosegarth Square Master Plan. That's a package bid of three interventions. What we want to achieve with this area is a place that people want to be, a nice vibrant accessible space that really does justice to the town centre and complements what we've already got as an offer. A space that connects the bus station, the train station, and provides a, a space where people want to enjoy, you know, spend some time, whether that's relaxing, sitting on a bench, leisure, enjoying culture, health and well-being, and just generally improving the greenery within the town centre. It then provides a nice balance to the existing town centre around the marketplace, which is the prime retail area for the town. From my perspective, it's been fantastic to be involved in this exciting project for Boston. Through a series of projects, we've been able to start to make a real difference to the town. But it's only the beginning. The work of the town deal has helped provide further funding through the Leveling Up Fund, the UK Share Prosperity Fund, and other initiatives are now being talked about. The partnership work that is ongoing through the Boston Town Deal Board should be the stepping stone for a much improved Boston. And there's many people who I thank on behalf of the town deal and on behalf of the town for helping make a real difference to Boston. Mm -hmm.